All right, we're just gonna be doing another impressions video today, completely unscripted. So if that's not your thing, this is about the time to turn off. And we're gonna be looking at Project Able. Now, Project Able is a 2D survival horror game that's currently in development. I actually only played the demo for this playthrough, and uh, it's a horror game. It's two-dimensional. It's still in development. And it describes itself as a 2D action horror in the vein of Resident Evil, Silent Hill, and Dead Space. Now, I'm a big fan of most of these franchises. Uh, Dead Space is what I'm least familiar with. I've played Dead Space 1 2, never touched 3. And I don't see Dead Space in this. I do. No, I see very little Silent Hill. Uh, there is a reference, but this is very much in the Resident Evil Playhouse. And it's, it's very nice that way. Now, uh, let's start off with things that I don't like. Uh, let's start off with the negatives, because there's actually a lot to like here, especially for something that's still early in development, I imagine. Uh, the audio could use some work. Uh, there's no footstep noises. Uh, there's very little music beyond the save room, and even then the save room serves a little purpose in this demo. And the actual noises the enemies make, they're really nothing special. I don't know if... It, there needs to be too much more, but I think footstep noises would be appreciated. It's something that, you know, all, classic Silent Hill and Resident Evil had those. They add more than you think, because when you're just running around with nothing to punctuate your character's steps, it sounds off-putting. It's, it's not a big issue, mind you. It's simply just a little pet peeve I had. Uh, the enemies are kind of basic in the demo. Uh, we have zombies and we have bats. You know, uh, it's a demo though, so I, this doesn't even really seem like a complaint. I mean, why would you show off the goods in something that's, you know, apparently pre-alpha? Why would you show off the good things there? But I hope the main game has something a little more, you know, a little more substantial than just uh, the tried and true guys we've seen before. Uh, I've noticed there are some bugs in the demo, actually, and the one I noticed pretty consistently is enemies would just get stuck in the environment. They would just uh, get caught on a rock or caught on a wall and just completely spaz out. Uh, very strange, but this seems like something that would just be kinked out over time, so it's really, it's no big deal. Yeah, that's honestly, that's really all I didn't enjoy about Project Able, because I'm very impressed with where this is going. Uh, I actually did play the demo before this. Uh, the Project Project Able .4 demo that I played for this Impressions. It is uh, the second demo of this game I played. I did the .34 demo, and I have to say, I did not enjoy .34. Uh, I think conceptually it was interesting. There's a lot of good things there to appreciate, but uh, I might post some gameplay of .34 for a second here. It just was clunky. Uh, the shooting, you could use some work. I don't know, I, I wasn't a fan. It was hard to see, the sprite animations just weren't appealing. This is an immediate jump in quality. Uh, one, in, there's an inventory system now, and it's the RE4 inventory system. So yeah, let's just get to that. Uh, this feels like a genuine 2D RE. Like a gen, an actual uh, two-dimensional Resident Evil. Uh, this feels like, if this, is a, if this is good, if this project does work out, if it's completed, you know, because obviously we don't know what potentially could happen. Uh, this feels like it could be a fully realized version of what Resident Evil Gaiden was going for, of trying to be, you know, a top-down, two-dimensional Resident Evil experience. Uh, this has the inventory system, this has uh, kind of the combat. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, because uh, it's not really... This is actually where you could argue it's closer to Dead Space, but... You know. uh, it has... Uh, it has uh, a save rooms, item boxes, uh, it's got a, gonna have a merchant in the final version. And hell, the first gun you pick up is basically just the Red 9 for Resident Evil 4, so uh, RE4 and the older RE games are very clearly an influence on this one, and it's definitely the most noted. Uh, it's definitely appreciated though, I really enjoy that we're gonna try and make, uh, you know, I'm gonna be talking on my ass here, because, you know, it's all live. Uh, this potentially could be an attempt to make, you know, what Lone Survivor was to Silent Hill, Project Able, whatever the finished version could be, could be to Resident Evil, where it's just kind of this uh, pixelated, uh, 
I don't want to say demake, that's uh, very bad connotations, but uh, I think you get what I mean. Uh, I want to talk about the movement. Uh, again, one of the things I didn't like about the earlier demo was how slow the player character was. In this one, uh, you're fast, you have eight directional movements, uh, you can move while shooting and reloading. Uh, oh, actually, reloading is another thing I don't like, but we'll get to that. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. Really, really well done movement. Uh, it's very appreciated, actually, because it says it's going for more action horror, so going for the stop and pop manner probably wouldn't make any sense. Uh, the combat itself is actually pretty good. The demo provides a big combat room just tested out with. I didn't record much there, but uh, I definitely want to go back and just try it out in free time. Uh, it's pretty interesting. The shooting itself is fast. The controls are fairly responsive. I hadn't had any issues on that front. Uh, you can attack while running, so it almost has like twin stick vibes in that regard. Since it does make re explicit reference in the tutorials to sticks, I wonder what controller support for this would be. Uh, this is actually a personal failure, I didn't test that for this video. And the reloading minigame is kind of a mixed bag. This is the one thing I'm not really sure I'd feel about. Uh, how you reload is you don't just hit a button and your character reloads, uh, you hit E, which uh, that's a very strange key binding, but you know, what have you. You hit E, uh, and then a meter comes up, and it's going to do a slow countdown a rhythm game style to uh, when you have to hit the E prompt again to do a successful reload. You do it too late or too early, and the reload's not going to work out. On one hand, that's unnecessarily obtuse. I mean, games have been doing just hit blank to reload for a while. It's worked out pretty well, I'd say. On the other hand, I appreciate that it's trying to have you juggle more at once. And if this is going for survival horror, then that is one way to do it, is to kind of hamper the player's ability to reload. That and does kind of make sense. Like, to reload a gun in a tense situation actually will be harder than just hammering a button. So trying to make some sort of minigame where you have to focus all, at the, while doing other things is not a bad idea. I have two minds on it. I'd have to see how it works in the finished product to have a real opinion. Yeah, that's really all I have to say on Project Table. It's a very short demo, you can clear it in about 10-15 minutes. Uh, maybe longer if you do go to the combat room. Uh, I enjoyed my time with it. Uh, I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, this is something I'm going to watch out for in the future. I'm going to keep my eye on this one.